Hello and welcome back to another Doctor Who review. Today I am going to be talking about this, which is this, the Flesh Bowl Figure Creator, uh, which was released nine years ago. And I posted a tweet that I bought this a uh, little while ago and said, shall I do a video on it? And it was a unanimous yes. Uh, a lot of people wanted to see me talk about this thing. Uh, and it was quite interesting, the reaction to me buying this. Uh, some people were like, yeah, great. It's a really cool piece, a really cool toy. Um, other people were sort of, sort of sneered and jeered. The reason why I bought it is because I'm currently trying to fill in some of the gaps in my Doctor Who figure collection. And this was something that passed me by when it came out back in 2011. I sort of stumbled upon it on eBay and I looked at it and thought, oh, well, this is going for cheap. It was only 10 quid. And I thought, oh, I could get one. And I was like, well, is it really any good? Is it anything like anything that appears in Re the Rebel Flesh, the Ganger episode of series six? I had a look at some screen grabs and I compared it to this, the toy. And turns out that this is actually a really accurate representation of the Ganger maker. So as soon as I saw that, as soon as I saw that actually it looks just like the thing from the show, I thought, well, in that case, I better get it because this is kind of the last sort of proper playset, if you can call it a playset, that came out of the 5.5 inch range. Obviously, we had the absolutely incredible TARDIS playset, the 10th Doctor one, which was superb, absolutely superb, probably one of the best playsets of anything ever. And then we had the 11th Doctor's one, which was also nice, not quite on the same grand scale as the 10th Doctor's one. And then I guess we had this from series six. Like I said, people sort of sneered and jeered at me for uh, buying this. And that kind of reminded me of when this was announced back in 2011. I remember at the time, this didn't have a lot of love, I don't think. This wasn't something that I bought because at that point in time, my relationship with collecting new series Doctor Who stuff was sort of on the back burner, really. The classic series stuff was coming out thick and fast. That was my Doctor Who growing up, so I wasn't really interested in this stuff. I didn't really like series six anyway, I thought it was pretty crap. So I was like, well, why am I gonna waste my money on that when I can be getting really good stuff like Genesis of the Dalek sets and Destiny of the Dalek sets and all these new Davros figures. But I do remember it being announced and I do remember thinking at the time, huh, that's actually really cool. But I remember other people thinking, Oh, what a stupid idea. Just like, what are they doing that for? Another thing that needs to be mentioned before we get into the mechanics of how this works is looking at the series six line of the Doctor Who range in general. I don't think it happened with the first wave, but maybe the second or third wave or wave A and B, I can't remember how they did it back then. Eventually they started to release figures with this stuff, which was the goo, the gango goo, I think that was what they called it, which is basically white slime. Now, this was to capitalize on the ganger episode because all gangers were made of a white slimy gloopy substance. Now, this came with quite a few of the figures. I've got a few sachets of this unopened. Uh, the person who sold this on eBay very kindly supplied some sachets of goo and uh, slime. I remember at the time when this was announced that you know all figures are gonna come with a sachet of slime and also a white blank face mask for your figures, like a weird death mask type thing, all in order to improve play for kids because then you've got your gang of goo, you've got your gang of faces. Any of your figures could be a ganger. What a great idea. But I remember at the time that was kind of sneered at. And thinking about it now, it just really goes to show where people were in terms of the Doctor Who toy line at that point. If this had come out in Russell T Davies' time, when the Doctor Who range and the series itself was really at its peak, people would have been like, wow, what a great toy. Kids would have loved this. Kids love slime, you know. This is not a new uh, idea by any means. You know, slime has been around since I think 1976 when Mattel invented it. And, uh, you know, it's been used over so many different toy lines over the years. Masters of the Universe used it with their incredible slime pit playset. Twice they did that. There was a slime playset with the Harry Potter line where Mattel had that. There was slime stuff in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Playmates 80s vintage line. Slime is just one of those 
classic toys, really. So it made sense that characters were like, well, you know, it's in the program. Kids love slime. This is another piece of play value to add to the figures. And of course, the thing with the figures is retailers want to see something new from the products coming out. You know, we had the original five inch line, then we had the figures with the collect and build elements. And then this was just another thing to go, hey, look, this is something new and different that you haven't seen before. And that makes retailers interested and hopefully it'll make consumers interested. But like I said, people kind of sneered at this. And I think that is because a lot of the people who were invested in the toy range at the time were younger when the toy line started with Russell T Davies' Doctor Who and then by the time it got to this they were a lot older, they were really in it for just collecting the figures, they weren't there to play with the figures um, but I imagine that if you were a kid at the time this was probably a lot of fun, I'm sure your parents hated it because uh, slimy stuff always ruins people's carpets and all sorts so I love it I think this was a really really great idea I think at the end of the day people need to remember that this is a toy line this is not a collector's line or it might be considered that now but at the time it wasn't you know it was sold in Toys R Us and the entertainer and all those places and it was aimed at children and uh, I just think by that point a lot of the audience had moved on and Eventually, of course, we ended up with a 3.75 inch line because I think the trouble was kids were sort of slowly being costed out of the line itself because the price of the figures were going up and it wasn't really within pocket money range. I remember thinking that myself, that why would I pay X amount of money for Matt Smith with a beard or Matt Smith with a different colour shirt on? You know, it just seemed weird to me and sometimes it didn't even come with sonic screwdrivers. That's that. That's that part over so I actually think that the whole slime of series six idea I think as a toy idea it was really good fun you know someone who is not just a collector of Doctor Who figures but a collector of toys generally uh, and a big toy fan that really spoke to me I thought it was a really cool fun idea same as this you know this makes for a fun toy for kids it also makes for a nice diorama piece uh, it's really really well done the sculpting on this is very cool you know you've got your human sized outline you've got your nuts and bolts around the outside you've got all this cool circuitry stuff you know it's all been painted as well there's like copper detailing with the wires you know they did a really good job and this component which clicks onto the back if i take this bit out which we don't need for this when you have it like this oh bugger i pulled the actual um, rubber off haha <laughs> broke it We'll pretend that didn't happen. Um, yeah, this bit that clicks onto the back, uh, again, looks just like the thing in the story. This is where the, the goo sits, and this is where you put the goo in to make your figure, which we're going to do in a minute. I think this is like slightly larger in the program, but again, look how well this has been sculpted. You know, you've got all of the detailing down here at the sides with all these holes and stuff in the sculpt. It's been painted well. You know, you don't need to use it as a toy. You can just have it as a diorama piece. And, you know, I know that the, the paint on this is fairly bog standard, but it doesn't take much for someone to go, oh, I'll just add a bit of a dark wash to that to make it feel more authentic. I don't know. I think it looks great. I think it's a really fun idea. However, this is not a new idea by any means. This is a tried and tested. This is something that I remember from the Terminator 2 toy line. You could make your own T-800s. Worked really well for Terminator because you had the skeleton. This is the skeleton that comes with this kit that you make your goo ganger Matt Smith around. And it made sense for Terminator because obviously you've got the famous skeleton and then you can build the, the flesh around it and peel it off and you know it sort of looks like the film i think terminator did it again later on for terminator salvation i don't actually know how that works because i think playmates did the terminator stuff i don't know if like the mechanism is then bought by character i don't know i think character distributed the terminator salvation figures in the uk so perhaps that's something to do with it so what we're going to do is we're going to build ourselves a matt smith out of this stuff just to see if it's actually gonna work. I have never tried this before so if it goes completely wrong which it probably will do then I do apologize. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get our skeleton I guess and stick it in there that is the right 
way around. That'd be awkward, wouldn't it? Put the skeleton in backwards. The mold here, I don't know if you can see this on camera. You can see it's got Matt Smith's face in it and all the creases and stuff in his shirt. Weird that they did it just like that. They didn't do it with the jacket. It was just shirtless and with no bow tie. I guess it's to try and make it simpler. So if it is too complicated, the mold will probably come out a bit crappy. But this in itself reminds me of Han Solo being frozen in carbonite from Empire Strikes Back, which in itself is another cool toy. If you ever collected any of the Star Wars figures, that was always a favorite of mine, uh, as was the playset that came out later on. So let's click that in there, right? So then this bit clips into here. There we go, right, that's clicked in. We've got two pots. One is to be filled with water. One is to be filled with powder. We have a spoon for mixing it all up with, and uh, this interesting plastic blade for cutting off the excess mold. Like I said, I bought this off eBay, so it has been used. Obviously they didn't get an awful lot of play out of it because it feels like it was used once and then they went, yeah, forget about that. I'll try and do it on camera so you can you can see. Oh, I've become one of those cooking channels. I'm sure it doesn't matter if it's a bit too much or a bit too little. So there is our water. Now, I think it says in the instructions use cold water. I have opted for room temperature water because I watched a review of someone playing with the Terminator 2 playset. I think they said warm water works better. So then add the powder to the water, a small amount at a time, stirring continuously. You can do this slowly as you have plenty of time. The mixture takes about 10 minutes before it starts to set. All right then, add the powder into the water. All right, so let's go. Oh my God, there's a bloody lump in it. Is that bad? This is the thing, because this is old, I don't know how well this is gonna work. Right, so that's a little bit. Is anything really happening? It just looks like lumps in water. I don't think this is working. I don't know if it's because it's friggin' old as hell. A bit worried about this. I don't, I don't think this is gonna go quite as I had planned because at the moment it's just, it's just lumps. Hmm, okay. Oh, let's just go for it. I can't be faffing around. Right, there we go. So, poured it in. This does not seem like it's gonna be viable. I'm trying to break up the lumps. It's so lumpy, so, so lumpy. I mean, is it, is it supposed to be like that? I'm gonna be really disappointed if this doesn't work because I thought, well, I'll probably only ever do this once. So it's worth having a go. And from the looks of things, it's not gonna bloody do anything. Look at that, there's just spoonfuls of lumps. One last mix for prosperity, so. I guess I pour it all in, lumps and all. Ugh. Get all that goodness in there. Leave that there. Gizmo, do not eat that, whatever you do. I wouldn't advise it. There it is. I don't know if you can see that on camera. I don't really want to always bloody spill in out. Let's go for it. So for best results, do it slowly. Oh, it's going in. So you can see it's starting to go in. Oh. I don't know if it should be making that awful noise. It doesn't appear to be going any further. Oh shit. It is literally leaking out the bottom. Oh my god. How? How has this happened? This is a disaster. Oh. <laughs> it is literally just popping out of the, the base. It's not going anywhere. It's not going. It's just coming out the at the bottom. Why? Why has this happened? Ah, what a load of shit. Well, I can't keep pushing it because it is literally just going everywhere. This was not meant to happen at all. Look, look at it. It's just. Where's the bottom coming off? <sighs> it's shit, this isn't it? Here is the problem, kids. Where it wasn't mixed enough. It has just clogged up into this lumpy mess. Ah, oh. lovely. So I think it's fair to say that that was an absolutely unmitigated disaster. I was very disappointed and uh, I actually managed to make Matt Smith's 
left arm and his left foot and that was about it. So I thought, well, I don't want to go away from this video not having made anything, so I'll have another go. This time in a controlled environment, in the sink, where it was going to cause a lot less mess. So uh, I thought, well, I'll do what the instruction says, I'll use cold water. Did it help? Not really. It still started off as lumpy and horrible. So I was thinking, well, there must be some way to get this to work. So I did what the instructions didn't tell you to do and added a bit more water. And it actually started to work a bit better. It started to become less lumpy. I also just chucked the powder straight in the water afterwards because I was doing that bit in a bit and it wasn't doing anything. So I just thought, bugger it, chuck it all in. So I started to pump it in. As you can see, it actually didn't go too badly. It's filled up most of the mold. Unfortunately, it was all the way down to about his foot, his right foot anyway, and uh, that's where it stopped. So if it works, he might have half a foot. It tells you in the instructions you should leave it 10 minutes to set. I've left it longer than that. This has probably been about 20 minutes. I'm slightly concerned because outside it's still like jelly. And I mean, I don't know what the consistency of this stuff is meant to be like, but I can't imagine it's meant to be quite as jellified as that. So here we go. Let's uh, see what the fruit of my labors have accomplished. Um, again, the reason why it didn't fill the mold is because the lumps, the lumps just completely obliterated the whole thing. The thing fell at the bottom again. It was just a disaster. So like Han Solo from Carbonite, let's, am I doing this right? I don't want to balls it up at the last minute. Let's check the instructions. Bugger it. Let's just pull it apart and see what happens. Oh, I say, right, well, it's kind of worked, kind of. Oh, no. I mean, so <laughs> he's got two pegs sticking out of his ass cheeks. <laughs> Excellent. Love it. Right. Let's use this, this implement, this knife thing. So uh, do, is that, do I do it now? I'm worried that if I use this, it's just going to break. Right. So this is still powder. A lot of this is still powder. I don't know if this is when I'm supposed to be using this. Where it didn't dissolve, that's where it clogged the, the hole there. He's got no feet, basically. I'm really worried that if I just pull on this, the hole... Oh, no. It's come away. Ew. Right, well, it's really slimy. Um, and he's, like I said, he's got all this crap. Let's try and cut some of this stuff off. It's also got like a really weird stringy bit. But it actually has kind of worked, sort of. You know, if I was a kid, I'd be slightly disappointed that he didn't have any feet, but um, I mean, this, this thing, this thing's crap. I mean, what's this supposed to be doing? You're probably better off with a pair of scissors, to be totally honest. I don't know if, if I'd have made it properly. I don't know if he would have actually been able to stand up on his own. I think, you know, look, he's got a peg coming off his chin as well. Um, oh, his ass cheeks came out, right, that's good. I mean, I gotta say, it isn't bad. I mean, it isn't, it isn't great, but it's a fun toy. If I was a kid and I was playing with my Doctor Who figures and I was like, oh, you know what, today I'm gonna do a, play a story where they're on a planet and they've got ganger technology and they wanna clone the Doctor, this would be a lot of fun. I don't know how well you can see this. I'm very concerned that the more that I touch this, the more that it's just gonna fall to pieces. It's a good, fun idea. And I actually gotta say, I commend character for, for doing it. And there, you know, you can sort of see some of the sculpted details on it with the shirt and stuff and the, the, the trousers. And you can sort of cut it. You can see it's Matt Smith, like for sure. But yeah, there we go. That's uh, that's my ganger, Matt Smith. Um, slightly disappointed that this will quite quickly disintegrate. So I can't sit this on the shelf with the rest of my collection and go, look, a toy I made myself. Um, it will just fall apart. But I didn't buy it for that. I bought it because I wanted the, the this, this thing, which now looks like it has been in some terrible bukkake session. And uh, yeah, there we go. So that was the Flesh Bowl Creator playset.
Playset? Is it a playset? Probably not. Toy. Cool diorama piece. Um, and uh, if you want to Matt Smith made out of a suspicious substance, then um, it's the toy for you. I saw someone selling it for like hundreds of pounds on eBay brand new. What psychopath would pay that money for this? Oh, madness. But there we go. Very nice. Bye-bye.